Okay, uh, good evening. Uh, oh, good morning. It's uh, August 12, uh, 2023. The time is around 2.04 a.m. Good morning. This is uh, Professor David J. De Los Reyes. Okay, uh, <coughs> my topic for this session will be in the form of long video format uh, discussion. And the topic is actually college algebra. Okay, uh, we are running smooth on our college algebra. Okay, uh, let's uh, continue with our college algebra. Uh, this will now be, <coughs> this is college algebra, lesson number 29. And the title of the topic for this morning will be complex numbers. The last time around, uh, lesson number 28, uh, we are done with the so-called uh, solution of a radical equation. Okay, so we know already how to solve if the given equation is a radical equation. Okay, so for uh, this morning, we will be solving complex numbers. Complex numbers is actually the foundation of alternating current circuit. Uh, it is just that the designation is different from the complex number on algebra with respect to the complex number under alternating current circuit. Uh, but the concept is actually the same. Okay, let's proceed. Complex numbers. Uh, we, for us who are watching YouTube shorts on uh, YouTube, right? Uh, there are some problems in which it was given in the 15 second and 60 second format that the problem involves imaginary number. Uh, imaginary number is actually a part of the complex number. Okay, let's proceed. Imaginary number. <coughs> the designation for imaginary number under college algebra is designated by I, small letter I. Okay? That's uh, imaginary. Okay? And uh, the value of I is actually square root of a negative one because uh, imaginary number involves the so-called taking of the square root of a negative number it is it is actually impossible to take the square root of a positive number because uh, if we try to use our calculator uh, you put any number but uh, the sign is negative if you, if you try to take the square root the value will not come out from your calculator but mathematically speaking, actually we could bring out the value, but uh, there is no i, and in the, in the calculator will not bring an, an i value over here. I don't know the modern calculators, but uh, this calculator of mine was, uh, okay, doesn't involve the value i. But uh, mathematically speaking, we could bring out the square root of a negative number. Okay, so under the study of complex number, I is imaginary, and the value of I is actually the square root of negative 1. If we try to square both sides over here, okay, uh, this is a radical term, right? It got a radical thing. This is square root, right? So to remove this square root over here, we must have to square uh, both sides, right? i to the second power will be i square and uh, the square root of negative one uh, you square, uh, actually the square root of negative one can be written as negative one raised to one half right then we take again the square value of that one right so for me i don't just uh, place negative one i want to show how it come to be negative one so if we try to expand this one, we use the laws of exponent. So this will become negative 1. A 1 half times 2 will be 1. Okay, or just simply negative 1. So under the study of complex number, the value of i square is equal to negative 1. Okay. Uh, don't forget this one, because in the simplification of the so-called uh, complex numbers, we will be using this value i square is equal to negative 1. Okay, uh, let's try to bring out uh, how a complex number is represented under the study of Pauli's algebra. 
Under the study of college algebra, complex number can be written as uh, A plus BI. Uh, where A is actually the real part. The real part. Okay? It is A. And the term which has a companion I is actually the so-called imaginary part. Imaginary. Okay? So, this uh, two things here represents a complex number. A is the real part. The value which, uh, which, which has a component uh, I is actually the imaginary part. So, I place it here. A is the real part. B is the so-called imaginary part. And for us to uh, distinguish the imaginary from the real part, the ima imaginary part is always uh, beside the value i. Okay? So A plus B i is a complex number, A is the real part, and B is the imaginary part. Okay, uh, let's try to bring out the operations of a complex number. The operations of a complex number, it is actually a very long one because uh, I've been teaching alternating current circuit. And before we proceeded with the calculation of uh, some parameters under alternating current circuit, okay, we try to perform addition and subtraction and complex number, multiplication of a complex number, and division of a complex number. Okay, since uh, I know already the operations on complex number, uh, this will be the summary. So, <clears throat> for addition and subtraction of complex number, uh, just add and subtract. Okay? Just add and subtract. Meaning, you add all the real parts, okay, combine them into one, and add all the imaginary parts, combine them into one, and that's it. For the addition and sub subtraction, it will be the same. For multiplication, okay, uh, we use the so-called uh, POIL method. POIL method is the so-called uh, PERSA OUT uh, inside last, uh, or uh, the other equivalent of that one is actually you perform the so-called uh, distributive law. That's the POIL method. Okay, I want to erase this one. It's the POIL method. POIL. Okay. First out, outside, inside glass or this is the actually the equivalent of the so-called distributive law okay so if you are multiplying two complex numbers just use this foil here or just uh, use this foil or distributive law are actually the same because uh, later on if we try to bring out the problem we could uh, distinguish what is a foil okay for the so-called uh, division, okay, to <coughs> simplify the resulting division of two complex numbers, we must have to use our knowledge of the so-called complex conjugates. We must have to rationalize the, what you call this, the denominator, for it to be the power is equal to an exact power. Uh, that term is actually rationalized, rationalized, right? So, we must have to use our knowledge of complex conjugates. Okay, and what are complex conjugates? Complex conjugates, uh, it is something like this. If the given, uh, what you call this complex number is A plus BI, its complex, uh, complex conjugate will be A minus BI. Meaning to say, if this is plus, for it to be complex conjugate, the sign of this one should be minus. So the complex conjugate of A plus BI is actually A minus BI. And if the given uh, complex number is of the form A minus BI, its complex conjugate should be A plus BI. As simple as that one. So we'll just use this one in the so-called division of complex numbers. Okay? Uh, it's easy to, what you call this, uh, remember this one. If the sign of this is plus, for it to be complex conjugates of the given complex number, the sign of the complex conjugate will be minus. If this is minus, this should be plus. It is just something like that. Okay, uh, let's try to bring out 
uh, an example problem to illustrate the operations and complex numbers. So we'll try to bring out uh, an example problem of addition and subtraction maybe, multiplication of complex number, and the so-called division of complex number. For me, it is an easy thing already because I am teaching alternating current circuit. And the concept of this is actually the same concept on the complex number under alternating current circuit. Okay? Okay, let's try to bring out an example problem. Oh, this is just a simple one. Uh, the first one will be perform the indicated operation. Uh, we got, uh, what do you call this, a, comp a negative uh, number inside the radical sign plus a negative number again inside the radical sign. And the problem is perform the indicated operation, meaning we must have to perform the addition. The operation is uh, addition, right? So we are under addition. Uh, I just give you an example, uh, easy example problem for the first one. Uh, let's try to bring out the solution. The square root of minus 16 plus the square root of minus 4. Okay. Uh, don't ever use your calculator on how to bring out the simplification of this. It will not come out. Okay, it will not come out. Because there is so, no such thing as a so-called square root of a negative number by using the calculator. And if we try to bring out the proper solution of this without using the calculator, okay, uh, this should be equal to uh, negative 16 can be written as 16 times negative 1, right? Right? Negative 16 can be written as uh, the product of 16 times negative 1. Then uh, we try to what you call this factor out uh, 16, it's a perfect square, right? 16 can be written as a, a square of a perfect number. So that can be written as a 4 square times minus 1, right? So I place inside the first one, it will be the equivalent of the first one, the square root of 4 square times minus 1. Because 4 square is 16 times minus 1, and that will be negative 16. So this one is actually equivalent to this. Plus, the second one, uh, <coughs> the value of negative 4. Uh, negative 4 can be written as uh, 2 square times minus 1, right? Because 2 square is 4 times minus 1, that will be minus 4. So the second part will be plus the square root of 2 square minus 1. Okay, then we try to replace uh, uh, minus 1. Uh, what's the value of minus 1? Minus 1 is actually I square. Okay, minus 1 uh, is uh, actually I square. So the next step will be, this will become uh, the square root of 4 square. Minus 1 is actually I square plus the square root of 2 square. Again, replace minus 1 by I square. Okay, uh, 4 is a perfect square, 2 is a perfect square, okay, so the square root will just be simply 4 times i, okay, the second one, 2 is a perfect square, take the square root, the operation inside is multiplication, so actually we could take the square root separately, the square root of 2 square is just 2, and the square root of i square will be just i, okay, so what comes out? This should be plus or minus 4i, plus or minus 2i. Okay, so in here, uh, we are adding and subtracting. So we use first the plus. Plus 4i, plus 2i, that will be plus 6i. Okay, and minus 4i, minus 2i will be minus 6i. So the final answer of this one is actually plus or minus 6i because if you try to use your calculator okay this will not come out okay but uh, mathematically speaking algebraically manipulating it the answer of uh, the square root of negative 16 plus the square root of negative 4 is actually plus or minus 6i uh, don't ever use your calculator in the so called uh, taking the square root of a negative number it will not come out okay Next example, 
So actually, we have performed already the addition and subtraction, right? Okay, uh, next example. Perform the indicated operation, the given a uh, complex number, uh, it's a quotient, so this now falls under division. Right? The given complex number is 3 minus 2i all over 4 plus 3i. Real part, imaginary part, real part, imaginary part. Okay, let's try to bring out the solution. Uh, I rewrite the given uh, fraction, so after the rewriting, this is the value, right? And uh, to simplify the resulting, uh, what you call this, the given quotient, uh, it falls under the division, right? We must have to introduce the complex conjugates. We must have to multiply uh, the <coughs> complex number 4 plus 3i. Its complex conjugate should be 4 minus 3i, right? If this is plus, the complex conjugate of 4 plus 3i should be 4 minus 3i. So we must have to multiply the given right hand side by 4 minus 3i over 4 minus 3i. So we could simplify the denominator. Okay? What's next? Uh, the operation is multiplication, right? Uh, this is a dot, but I don't want to put a dot. Uh, this is quantity or quantity. Okay? So, the numerator is actually the product of two binomials, right? So, it will be 3 times the second binomial minus 2i times the second binomial. Uh, that is actually termed to as the FOIL method. FOIL method. <laughs> or the so-called distributive law. FOIL method is that... Uh, Uh, this three here is the outside thing. So first, uh, first outside, inside last. Inside is a uh, two i. So this is first. Uh, uh, this portion here is first outside. Next one is uh, inside last. That's why it is termed to a spoil. Oh, in layman's term, it is just a so-called distributive law. I, I for me, I don't even like that foil. Okay. Uh, I will just try to perform this one by using the distributive law. 3 times the second quantity minus 2i times the second quantity. That's it. Right? All over. The given denominator is the same. You try to multiply. It will be 4 times uh, 4 minus 3i and uh, 3i times 4 minus 3i. Okay? It's the same. Distributive law. So if we try to expand, 3 times 4 will be 12. 3 times 3i will be negative 9i. Minus 2i times 4 will be negative 8i. Right? And then negative 2i times negative 3i. A minus in a minus will be plus. So this will be plus 6. 2 times 3 is 6, right? i times i will be i squared. All over. The resulting denominator, it's the same. Okay? Uh, 4 times 4 will be 16. Okay, and uh, what's next? The middle term will be 3i times 4 will be 12i. The next part is negative 3i times 4, that will be negative 12i. And the last part is actually 3i times negative 3i. 3 times 3 will be 9, and i times i will be 9 squared. Actually, when we try, uh, when we do the so-called uh, multiplication of complex conjugates, Actually, we are eliminating the middle term. Okay? Then, try to replace this i square by the value of negative 1. Okay? So, simplifying the numerator, uh, 12, after the replacement of this i square by negative 1, uh, what will come out? Uh, this is 12, right? This is minus 6 now. And 9i minus 8i will be negative 17i. And for the bottom portion, if we try to replace i square by negative 1, this will now be the positive 9. So 16 plus 9 will be 25. So if we try to simplify the numerator, 12 minus 6 will be a positive 6 minus 17i. The resulting denominator is now actually 
free of the so-called imaginary part after the multiplication of its complex conjugates. That is all over 25. And if we try to distribute the common denominator for both the real and imaginary, the simplification of this will be 6 over 25 minus 17 over 25 i. So this will be our final answer. So that is actually uh, what they call this uh, an operation that involves complex numbers under division and even under multiplication. Okay? Uh, there's no hard, hard thing about this. Uh, you just use your knowledge of the so-called from the start, the fundamental operations, the so-called distributive law. Okay, because without knowing the distrib distributive law and the so-called proper size, so you cannot expand this one. Okay, so this is an easy one if you know your fundamental operations. Also, the final answer here will be 6 over 25 minus 17 over 25 times i. Okay, last one for tonight. Uh, for this morning. Perform the indicated operation. We are given uh, two binomials that involves imaginary number. This is 2 plus 9i minus 3 minus 8i open quantity close quantity. Uh, this is now the so-called FOIL method. Uh, the first thing, uh, the f here is actually 2. Okay, then you multiply that to the second binomial. Okay, it is termed to us outside because it's outside. And this 9i is the inside part. Okay. You multiply that to the second binomial. Uh, this L here refers to last. Okay. First outside, inside last. Or just use the so-called distributive law. So if we try to multiply this one, I don't even want to think of uh, that full method over here. Okay. I don't like it. I, I just uh, per, uh, prepare the so-called distributive uh, law. I mean the naming of this, the method, right? So it will be 2 times the second binomial, minus 3 i, minus 3 minus 8 i, plus 9 i, times the second binomial, minus 3 minus 8 i. Then try to perform the operation. 2 times negative 3 will be negative 6, 2 times negative 8 i will be negative 16 i, 9i times minus 3 will be negative 27i. Okay. 9i times minus 8i will be 9 times 8 will be 72. This is plus and minus, so this should be minus. And i times i will be i square. Then try to replace any term that contains i square by the value negative 1 to simplify it. Or oh, this is an example uh, operation under multiplication. Right? So simplifying this one. This should be what comes out, negative 6, negative 16, negative 27, the uh, imaginary part, right, uh, within i. So this is negative 43i. This is minus 72. We replace this i squared by negative 1, so this is times negative 1. So this will now be passing 22, 72 rather, minus 6, so that will be 66 as real part, right? And the imaginary part is the value negative 43i. So that will be our final answer. As simple as that one. So these are the three examples for performing the operations under complex number. For addition and subtraction, it's an easy one. For multiplication, just use the FOIL method or the so-called distributive method. And for the so-called uh, quotient operation or division operation, uh, just use your knowledge of so-called complex conjugates. Okay? Like, uh, if this is plus, the complex conjugate should be a minus. I mean the sign. If this is minus, the complex conjugates should have a proper uh, sign as state. So, this is what we did over here. The complex conjugates of 4 plus 3i is actually 4 minus 3i. Because 4 minus 3i over 4 minus 3i is actually 1. Okay. Uh, by multiplying this complex conjugates, actually we are not changing the value of the fraction. Okay, that's a rule in algebra. Okay, that, that's it, guys. So for those of you who are taking up college algebra, if you want to subscribe to my channel, my channel is at youtube.com slash at proof David J. De Los Reyes. And if you want to share it, please click share. I am telling you this one, try to watch my long video format discussion in college subject. 
I am assuring you, you will learn something from it. Okay, good morning from Los Angeles. Professor David J. Delisrea.